This is an introduction to SEND support, which is the system that ensures that children and young people with special educational needs or disabilities, but without an education, health and care plan, receive the help that they need. This webinar is designed to give you an introduction to the following topics. What is SEND? The four broad areas of need. The graduated approach. SEND support and involving specialists. The role of the SENCO. The SEND information report and school meetings. Before we start to look at definitions, it is worth having a basic understanding of the legal framework. In 2014, there was a comprehensive update of the law with the Children and Families Act. To get the complete picture, you also have to consider the SEND Code of Practice, which is statutory guidance. The content of both of these can be found very easily using an internet search engine. Let's consider some important principles set out in the Children and Families Act 2014. The law here refers to local authorities. In Reading, Brighter Futures for Children is responsible for the delivery of children's social care, education including SEND, early years and prevention. Brighter Futures for Children is a not-for-profit company owned by but independent of Reading Borough Council. So what must they have regard to? the views, wishes and feelings of the child and his or her parent or the young person, the importance of them participating as fully as possible in decisions, the importance of them being provided with the information and support to enable participation in decisions and the need to support them to achieve the best possible educational and other outcomes. As you can see from this slide, the SEND Code of Practice sets out the entitlement of all children and young people in respect of education. It should enable them to achieve their best, become confident individuals living fulfilling lives and make a successful transition into adulthood. Having considered some general principles, we now need to look at some more specific information about SEND. The definition of special educational needs can be found in section 20 of the Children and Families Act, which provides the definition set out here. In order to understand the definition, you also need to have the definition of a learning difficulty or disability, which means that a child or young person has either a significantly greater difficulty in learning than the majority of others of the same age, or a disability which prevents or hinders them from making use of the type of facilities provided for children and young people of their age in a mainstream school. We also need to understand the definition of special education provision, which is educational or training provision that is additional to or different from that made generally for other children of the same age by mainstream schools. There are four broad areas of need covered by the SEND Code of Practice. The first of these is communication and interaction. This includes children and young people with speech, language and communication needs and those with ASD who may have difficulties with social interaction. Cognition and learning covers those with moderate learning difficulties through to profound and multiple learning difficulties. This also covers specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia. The third category is social, emotional and mental health difficulties. This may include those who are withdrawn or who have challenging behaviour. Some children may have mental health diagnoses or ADHD. The fourth category of sensory and or physical needs covers matters such as hearing or visual impairment or other physical disabilities. For some children, the identification of special educational needs will take place very early in life, but for others, they may not be identified until school. All schools will regularly assess the progress of children 
and this should identify those children who are not making expected progress. Section 6.19 explains that the first response to this should be high quality teaching and then afterwards to consider whether progress is still less than expected. You might wonder what legal duty the school has. All schools must use their best endeavours to make sure that a child with SEN gets the support they need. Best endeavours means doing everything they can to meet children and young people's needs. This is set out in both the Children and Families Act and the SEND Code of Practice. It is the governing body of the school that has this responsibility. So assuming a child has been identified as having special educational needs, what should the school do? They need to follow what's known as the graduated approach. As you can see, this involves assess, plan, do and review. So first, the school must assess what the child needs. Then they need to plan what they're going to do to help the child. The third stage is to actually do what they have planned. And then lastly, they need to review how successful their approach has been. If your child is going to receive support in school, what might that support look like? It could take many forms. Some people assume that it always involves one to one support for the child but that may not be the case. Here is a list of some possibilities. Your child might, for example, have a very specific learning programme. They might do some small group work. They might need some movement breaks during the school day. Perhaps they need support with their physical or personal care. And as you can see, it's possible that there may be some extra advice or help sought from specialists, such as an educational psychologist or a therapist. So if we're thinking about the sort of support that might be available from specialists, who might be involved? Here are some suggestions. Obviously, we've previously mentioned the educational psychology service. Some children receive speech and language therapy others occupational therapy or physiotherapy. Perhaps they may seek advice from the Reading Autism Advisor or the Behaviour Support Team at Cranberry College. Whatever happens, you should be involved as parents in that decision to involve specialists. You may be wondering to what extent you will be kept informed about what is happening. All children will have an annual report and this should explain the progress that has been made. If your child is receiving SEND support, the school will meet with parents at least three times each year and this meeting will be to discuss the goals or targets and any changes in support that may be required. These meetings should be led by a teacher with good knowledge and understanding of the pupil most likely your class teacher, together with the SENCO. These meetings may run at the same time as parents' evenings, but it's very important that there is enough time. The discussions that take place may be longer than standard parents' evenings. Do you feel that you're struggling to be heard? The statutory guidance addresses this by saying that parents know their children best and it is important that all professionals listen and understand when parents express concerns about their child's development. They should also listen to and address any concerns raised by children and young people themselves. If you get in touch with our service, one of the first questions we are likely to ask is have you spoken to the SENCO? So who is the SENCO? The SENCO or Special Educational Needs Coordinator is the person that's responsible for overseeing all of the pupils' special educational needs. So in most schools, this is going to be a very busy person who may also have teaching responsibilities. 
set out here is information about what the SENCO does on a daily basis. They work with the class teachers and provide advice. They keep detailed records of all the work that is done with children. And they're also available to meet with parents to discuss what's working and whether any changes are required. Maybe you would just like an overview of what to expect from your child's school. Every school will have an SEN information report, which contains a wealth of information together with information about how to contact the SENCO. You can find this information on the Reading Local Offer. If you put Reading Local Offer in your search engine, it will come up straight away and you can search for a particular school or other educational setting. Perhaps you have now spoken to the SENCO and you have arranged a meeting. It's well worthwhile preparing thoroughly for the meeting so that you can get the best out of it. As you can see, your child will have a support plan, which is sometimes referred to as an IEP or a provision map. That is a good place to start. So make sure you've got a copy of it and then you can use that to think about your child's needs and whether anything needs changing. Also looking at the school's information report that we've previously mentioned and make a list of anything that you want to talk about so that you don't forget anything. During the meeting itself, you will need to be quite active. It may be that you actually take the lead in the meeting and start the discussion. You will need to make a note of any actions that have been agreed and make sure you set a date for a follow up meeting to check the progress. Because there's quite a lot to think about and do during the meeting, you might find it helpful to have a friend or relative or supporter with you. It's always a good idea to try to work in partnership with the school. And here are some ideas that might help to build that relationship. It's helpful to acknowledge that the school has a view and that view may not be the same as yours, but to acknowledge any support that they are offering. Try to make sure that it's clear that you're offering to work with them and share your child's view because your child's view is very important in this process. Not only talking about your child's main difficulties, but also what works for them in your experience as a parent and perhaps from experience of previous year groups. It's always important to try to make sure the meeting has a solution focus. Rather than focusing too heavily on the problems, try to make sure that the discussion is always about solutions. It is always important to think about how you word your requests. It is better if they come across as suggestions or requests rather than demands which may not be well received. Here are some examples of the type of phrases that might help. We hope that you will now have some information that will help you to secure the best outcomes for your child. But if you need any further help or have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch. As you can see, there are several ways to contact us via our telephone helpline, email, our website or our Facebook page. We look forward to hearing from you.